station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. We are ready for the event. College of St. Benedict and St. John's University. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is College of St. Benedict and St. John's University. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Welcome to the space station. How do you hear us? We hear you great. Thanks, Scott and Mark. We're uh, really excited to talk to you today. I will uh, turn it over right now to some students who've got some great questions for you. Thanks. It takes a lot of faith, courage, or both to venture so far from what we know as home. What do you carry in you that gives you the strength to take such an adventure? Wow, that is a great question. I think the uh, idea that my life is a very small piece of the entire universe and uh, that there's a lot of people looking out for my safety, um, both of those things are uh, very helpful. It's my uh, goal, um, and all of our goals, I think, is to be able to contribute something. So these uh, adventures, these opportunities are great opportunities to try to contribute regardless of what the risks are. What does your body, your body feel like in zero gravity? Well, it feels kind of funny because you're just kind of floating around and, and it's almost like you're buoyant uh, in, the, in the middle of a pool, except there's no drag. And so you're, you can move around uh, very nicely. It's, uh, it's really kind of cool. How did your experience as a student and ROTC cadet at St. John's University prepare you for your time on the ISS? Certainly the uh, sense of teamwork and respect for other people, uh, cert discipline as well, of course, but also being able to recognize that there's lots of different ways to look at a situation and uh, getting other people's ideas and respect for those ideas is a great part of being able to uh, find the best idea. If someone gets sick on the station, are they evaluated by other crew members or do they receive treatment? So uh, for crew members coming to the International Space Station, we undergo several years of training, and uh, part of that training is medical training. So uh, we're pretty, pretty well versed in uh, taking care of each other and helping each other through some of the uh, things that might happen uh, to us up here. Uh, but we also have uh, connectivity to doctors on the ground, and they stand by at the ready to help us in case we have a need. What has been your most exciting in in experience in space so far? My most exciting experiences in space have definitely been spacewalks. The uh, combination of fear and intense focus that you have to do while you're doing those activities outside the space station. Again, the teamwork that's involved and uh, the intensity and the awe of all of the amazing environment you're in and the views of the Earth that are completely amazing, are really incredible. All those things make it uh, a very exciting event. What is the best part of living and working on the space station? And what do you miss most about Earth? Well, the best part for me uh, is, uh, is working with the incredible team that keeps this machine, this engineering marvel uh, in low Earth orbit 24-7 uh, for the last 20 years. And uh, uh, there's literally thousands of people working uh, with us every day to make all of our procedures happen, all of our events happen, to make sure all these systems work and everything's safe and everything's working the way it's supposed to work. And of course, the folks we have up here are uh, just uh, huge energy bombs in our lives. <laughs> so, so uh, and what I miss about most on Earth is uh, my family and friends. What research are you doing, and how has the microgravity affected your ability to do this research? There are actually hundreds of exper experiments going on on the space station at any given time, and uh, we really are kind of like laboratory technicians. We aren't so much the scientists who are making hypothesis, hypotheses. 
um, gathering data and doing the data analysis, we're, we're kind of facilitating their work. Um, but I can tell you the, the one example of this environment, something we could do in this environment that we can't do on the ground is uh, an experiment I got to help out with called ELF, the Electromagnetic Levitation Furnace. Um, it deals with how to um, construct materials at high temperatures, something that on the ground would require uh, a container for that substance, also known as a cruci crucible. Um, but at high temperatures, the, uh, the process can get, uh, um, get influenced by the crucible itself. So in space, where things float very easily, um, this ELF experiment is able to use electromagnetic fields to levitate the object and basically make it a more pure um, experiment without having at those high temperatures to make materials without it interacting with a crucible because there is no crucible. We did some research and found there are experiments aboard the ISS that include plant and crop growth as well as animal growth. What does NASA hope to learn from these studies under the unique conditions? Well, when a plant grows on Earth, uh, it knows where the sun is and it knows what direction gravity is. And the roots, after the seed germinates, go down a typical path towards water uh, that it has learned to do over the last billion years. Uh, in space, that's different because there's no gravity and we typically don't have them out in open sunlight. So we are trying to find out some optimum levels of light, some frequencies of light, intensities of light, and, and types of food, types of uh, how much to water, or how much not to water, and, we, uh, and which types of, uh, of plants will, uh, will grow. And we're hoping that we can not only make uh, learn how to make food for ourselves when we go on our long duration deep space missions such as back to Mars but also how to make stronger plants that might be able to uh, populate Earth and, and help us with our uh, food situation on Earth. So how do you take shower in space? <laughs> the short answer to that question is we don't. Um, but of course we do have personal hygiene needs both for our own benefit and the benefits of the crew members living in close proximity to us. And we actually use uh, something like this. This is a no rinse body bath pouch assembly. That's what it's labeled as. And we can insert this into a potable water dispenser, the same thing we use to dispense water into our dehydrated foods. And the uh, there's some soap in there, add a little hot water, and then using a straw like this, a special straw with a uh, valve so we can shut it off when we want to, we put that onto a towel and we basically get a, uh, that's the closest we can do is rinse off with a wet towel. How do you cook in space? And do you like the food you eat? I do like the food we eat. Uh, NASA does a really good job with uh, putting food together for us uh, for our six-month stays here on International Space Station. Uh, the food comes in uh, kind of two different varieties. You know, you have rehydratables, and then you have thermally stabilized uh, food. So for the thermally stabilized, we basically just put it in the oven, and we heat it up, and we eat it. And there's sweet and sour pork, lasagna, beef ravioli, beef steak. Uh, corn, all those kinds of uh, foods that we uh, typically eat on Earth. And for the rehydratables, we'll have uh, some, you know, some chicken salads and some turkey tetrazzinis, things like that. And, uh, and spaghetti and meatballs, one of my favorites. And of course, you got to have a tortilla with peanut butter and jelly, otherwise you have not been on the International Space Station. <laughs> How often and for what purposes are robots used on the ISS? You know, I'm not even sure I know all of the robots, robots that are, are on the space station, but I can tell you that the very large Canadian robotic arm that we use external of the space station, in the last five months, we've used it eight times. Um, three times, we used it to capture or release uh, visiting vehicles. Um, actually, I would say we've used it more than eight times because the captures and releases are two separate events, and I didn't account for all, both of those. We've also used it, in fact, uh, this last spacewalk, 
Scott here was operating that robotic arm while I was uh, basically installed on the end of it. So he was moving me around while my feet were on a special uh, attachment to the arm so that it could be used as a place for me to be standing. And he did a fantastic job. I really appreciated that. Um, there is a, uh, a Japanese robot that also I've gotten to play around with that uh, is basically a video camera. And they're trying to make sure they understand how to make this video camera fly around in the space station. But it looks like a little kind of a cute sphere with uh, eyeballs where the video cameras would be. What are you going to miss the most about being in space? Well, for me, I'll uh, I'll miss the uh, the floating. That's the the, the unique thing here. Uh, you get to float around, and you know, imagine being very young. And uh, there you go, Mark. Imagine being very young and just imagining that you can fly, and then all of a sudden one day you grow up and you find out you really can. It's really cool, and uh, I will uh, I will miss not being able to do this on a day-to-day -day basis. What do you do for your f for fun in your downtime, and do you play video games in space? <laughs> so actually, uh, I did try one out. Now that I think about it, there was one on one of the uh, tablets that we have up here, um, but I haven't spent a lot of time doing that. I'm, before I go to sleep, I like to read a book um, just to help myself calm down before bed. Um, I've also, although I haven't played very many video games, I've watched a lot of movies. That's something that we like to do once a week. We get the whole team together and watch a movie. And then uh, the thing I like the most, though, is looking out the window and then trying to share this experience with some pictures that we take out of our large set of windows called the cupola. What is the most unexpected thing you've encountered being in space? Well, I, I wouldn't say it was uh, uh, a huge uh, surprise, uh, but like I said, we have thousands of people working to make this uh, engineering marvel work every day. And, uh, and it was a very uh, pleasant experience to come up here and see how smoothly they all work together. Um, it, there's an awful lot going on every day. You know, 200 experiments that people are managing. We've got probably hundreds of systems that people are managing, and we have hundreds of operational tasks just on a day-to-day -day basis of trying to trying to keep this place running and safe and productive, and uh, to get the science done that uh, to help humankind, and uh, and that the cast of thousands that puts it all together is just absolutely brilliant. How long, on average, do astronauts spend on the International Space Station? For Scott and I, we're both going to spend about five and a half months up here. Some people are shorter. Very few are longer, like the one-year-long flight that we've had recently. Um, and the crew is six, about six people, and normally we, uh, about four times a year, well, definitely four times a year, we have... Uh, Three of those people come up and three people come back. So Scott and I didn't launch at the same time, but we overlapped for about two and a half, three months. Astronauts do a lot of training when they're on Earth to prepare themselves for being in space. Did the training prepare you for what, hap for what space feels like? And have there been any things that have happened to your body that you weren't anticipating? You know, there was uh, there was really nothing that uh, was not anticipated. The um, the training we have is incredibly thorough, and uh, parts of it are incredibly intense. So that when we get here, uh, hopefully it's a little bit easier than it was in training. Um, but the uh, probably the biggest thing that uh, that I actually felt because you can't feel some of the things you train for uh, on the ground until you get here, is the fluid shift in your body. And uh, feeling that for the first time in my body was an experience. I was expecting it, but it was an experience, and it uh, took me a couple of days to get used to, and then it kind of subsided a little bit, and uh, everything is, uh, is okay. How is your schedule each day decided? Does NASA assign you tasks, or are you able to choose your workday? NASA definitely assigns our tasks. We have a workday that starts at around 7.30 in the morning and goes through around 7.30 p.m. Um, there's a couple meetings in that day. There's about an hour scheduled for lunch. 
and we have about two and a half hours of that time that's scheduled for uh, exercise, which is really important to try to make sure that we can still function up here in the long term and also to uh, make sure we're healthy when we get back to the ground. How has your experience as an astronaut on the ISS been similar to and different from what you imagined? Well, when I was going through training, like I said earlier, you know, training is very intense and it's very thorough and you're doing it for a long time, for a lot of hours every day. And um, so I kind of expected it to be very, very busy, almost mind boggling busy and tiring and fatiguing when I uh, when we got up here. And there are there are times when it is exactly like that. But there are also times where it's uh, it's fun to be here and throughout all of it. It's all very fun. So that was a very pleasant um, uh, realization when uh, when I got here. It, it's very busy. It's very rewarding, but it's very fun. Have you ever had an emergency in space? I am very happy to tell you that I have not had an emergency in space. Um, so the time that Scott and I have been up here, we've just done some emergency drills for training purposes. I can tell you that there was an instance I know of on the space station where there was an ammonia leak, but happily that turned out to be a false alarm. That's one of the three emergencies that uh, where we definitely get a lot of training on dealing with. And of course, in the history of space flight, there have been other space stations that have had have a fire and uh, everyone's survived those things. Have you read any good books lately? And what are some of your favorite books? Well, some of my uh, favorite books are uh, leadership related and flight related as a as a pilot uh, for uh, you know, 30 years. But uh, my favorite book is The Fifth Discipline by Peter Senge. Um, but, uh, you know, for the last few years, we've been very busy in training. And honestly, I haven't uh, had time to really sit down and, uh, and read a book for enjoyment. But if, if I had to tell you what my favorite book right now is, then uh, uh, I would tell you it's the ISS training manual. <laughs> Well, I guess we have a little extra time, Mark. So why don't you answer that same question? Do you have any favorite books? I can I can tell you the book I'm reading right now is uh, Ancillary Justice. It's a it's a science fiction book that uh, one of my friends sent the PDF up to me to read. So I've been reading that. Um, a favorite book. I, you know, I'm gonna, you're going you're gonna to be convinced that I'm a huge geek after I say this, but uh, I really um, have enjoyed The Lord of the Rings. I haven't read it lately, but uh, that's a book that I, I really enjoyed at different periods of my life. Great. Um, and another question off the cuff here. When are you each uh, coming back to Earth? Well, I, my scheduled uh, land date right now is June 3rd, and I'll let Mark answer for him. Mine is February 28th. Actually, I think we're going to close the hatch between us and the space station late at night on, the, on February 27th, our time. But we'll land in Kazakhstan on the 28th uh, Kazakh time. All right. Um, well, thank you both for uh, speaking with us. We've had a great time. Uh, and I hope uh, to see you back here on Earth at some point. Thanks again. Thanks very much for those kind words, and uh, I will definitely try to get back to uh, behind the pine curtain sometime soon and see all you. That's a wonderful place you all are. Enjoy it. Thank you, all participants from the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.